Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. Hope everybody is off to a great start to their day and having an awesome week. Look, normally when I post uh, videos that my wife Marion does, I just kind of post them and let them speak for themselves. Um, I don't need to introduce her any longer or frame what she's speaking on. She's more than capable of expressing herself. But in this one, I can relate to it so intensely that I decided that I wanted to uh, give a short prelude to it uh, and then let her speak on it and let that stand. Uh, she's talking about in this video, toxic parenting, how to survive toxic parenting and the importance of holding those who have been toxic and dysfunctional in their parenting accountable she's speaking specifically to the way our culture tends to force the responsibility of being responsible on our youth and our children you know just forgive them that's your mom just forgive them that's your dad you know that's your mama that's your dad just it it, it gives the impression that simply being a mother or father affords you a right to uh indefinite and infinite access to children who view traumatized long after they've become adults. And that, you know, I, I, I personally believe that there's a level of respect that should be given no matter what, but that respect can be offered at a distance. And I advise my clients, I have lived my life by this, and I tell everybody, once you become an adult, you get to choose your circle. You're born into a circle that includes your family, your parents, your siblings, uh, your peers at school, and so on and so forth. But as you become older, you, you gain more and more control over who's in your circle. When you become an adult, you're absolutely 100% in control of who you're, who's in your circle. You don't have as much control over who's in your uh, periphery at work, but you can choose your job. So you are always in control of who's in your circle. And once you reach adulthood, you have not only a right, but a responsibility to ensure that everybody that's in your space has earned the right to be there. No one has an automatic card that provides them with uh, access to you. They have to have uh, earned it. That means they respect you. They treat you with care and kindness. They respect your personal boundaries and space. They, they know how to handle you. You don't owe anyone access to you who will harm you. It's that simple. And, and, and so while you may feel the need to forgive, and I, I, believe, I believe in forgiveness for the reason of releasing things that are detrimental and poison. I once was told that being unforgiving and hating someone for something they did is like taking poison and hoping someone else dies. And so I, I don't hold on to things but me forgiving you is not an automatic invitation back into my life. It's simply saying, I'm not finna hold on to this. Uh, go ahead and live your life. I'm gonna live mine. But if I think that you're detrimental to me, you're gonna live your life at a distance to mine. You don't have an automatic right into my life. Uh, no adult has an automatic right into my life. And that's how I live my life. And and Marion talks about this and she goes into some detail. And I think that this is something that we really need to look into the community. And the sense of it is, it's holding toxic parenting, the toxic parents accountable for their dysfunctionality and the harm that they're causing to their kids. Stop forcing kids to accept it and telling them it's their responsibility to forgive and let it go and not holding parents accountable. I'm going to jump off of here. I'm going to let Marion take it from here and uh, get what you can out of it. If you like it, share it. If you want to comment on it, let her know how you feel about it, uh, whatever. But I'm out of here.
Hello everyone, it's Marion Wallace with Restoring Ghettos Forgotten. I hope you guys are all blessed and doing fantastic. I wanted to shoot this little quick video uh, because I am in transit somewhere. And so I just kind of like pulled over because my next um, stop is the post office. I got to do some, you know, post office stuff there. So I wanted to just pull over and get this done before I make it to the, to the office. But today, um, the topic that I wanted to discuss, and please chime in when I post this to my YouTube channel, please feel free to leave uh, any comments you may have, anything that you'd like to add or whatnot. That would be really, really great. Uh, but today it's about uh, our parents. Um, like, you know, were they, were they toxic? And if they were toxic while we were growing up, have they changed any? So that's what this, this conversational piece is about. Um, so I'm just gonna get right into it because I don't have a lot of time. But what I'm noticing within our communities, and it, it, it may be prevalent in other communities, but what I'm noticing in our communities is that uh, there is no accountability. There's no accountability whatsoever. And the way that I was reared or raised, it was always about forgiveness. And I'm okay with that because I'm a very forgiving person. Um, but just because I forgive you, it doesn't mean I'm going to allow you to keep re-injuring me. So that's where I'm at in my, in my space right now that I'm just I'm done with people that continually, I hate when I get these little alerts because they distract me, uh, continually hurt me. I walk away from those people. I forgive them and I even pray for them and I wish them well, but I may not ever speak to them again not out of spite not out of hatefulness but just out of protecting my space and my peace so i may not deal with them again so hey i'm asking you guys you know do you do you have parents that you, you know you didn't grow up in the best situation and i know that there's not a, a handbook written that will you know that can just give us the blueprint of how to be great parents i know mo many times than not our parents came from you know, if, if they were abusive, they came from an abusive situation and then they came from an abusive situation. It's not something that you were just born with. It's something that, um, well, epigenetically, we can pass down trauma to our children. So it's a possibility um, that that could happen. But my question is, you know, have you lived that type of life? Like, do, do, you know, were your parents abusive? Were they toxic? Um, and then, you know, you got over the, please forgive me. And then some of them never say, I'm sorry, please forgive me, you know? And then you have to decide if you're going to forgive them anyway, to, to rid yourself of any negative energy or anything that could be uh, pulling you away from your God destined future. And so, you know, answer me that question, you know, ha have you grown up in toxic situations and have you forgiven the people that hurt you and, 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 and what are you doing about that now? Have the, have the person or the people changed? Can you now engage them? Can you now be um, the child, you know, under their parentage or uh, can you now be, have a right relationship with your mother or your father because they have changed? And I'm praying that many of you can, can come on and say, yes, things have changed. You know, it's this that I love, all of those good uh, reports. Um, but I wanna hear from everybody to see, you know, how do you handle that situation where the person has not changed? You know, do you love them from afar? Do you still put yourself in harm's way to go care for them? How do you handle that? Because that's something that needs to be talked about. Because I tell you what, there are people that are sitting on their high horses and they're judging other uh, believers um, because they don't deal with their parents. I mean, you have no right to judge unless you were in that home with that child. And then you still don't have a right to judge because how I take offense to something or how one person take offense to something, the other person may not take offense to it. So it's coming from their eyes, their perception, and what they experienced in, in, in their experience of the whole thing. It's, it's how they perceived it. So it's not for you to say, oh, it really wasn't that bad, or you should just forgive and move on. You don't know what traumas they've experienced in that home or with that person for you to just say, oh, just get over it. It's not that simple. 
some some stuff that people go through there's layers and layers of that dysfunction that's that's inbred inside of them that they have to work on sometimes for the rest of their lives to be functional and for you to just say well the bible says forgive it's not that simple yes we all should forgive but just because you forgive somebody doesn't mean that you allow them into your space to keep re-injuring you and i believe in healthy boundaries that's something that um christian african-american believers was we were not taught i didn't have healthy boundaries growing up from my childhood all the way up to my adulthood i had to learn them and you want to know why i didn't learn healthy boundaries is because every time somebody hurt me all i ever heard was forgive them not them taking accountability for hurting me but that i had the responsibility even as a child I had the responsibility to forgive them and move on. And it's not that simple because some things are traumatic and we go through traumatic life experiences. And most of our people, we don't go to counseling. We don't go to therapy sessions. We don't do any of that. So we holding all that stuff in and then we're expected to still be able to function in today's society and to rise above. And it's almost impossible until you deal with your demons the stuff that's inside of you so that's why i just feel like man and i know not all of our uh elders were like that some of them held the people accountable that hurt you know the, the children or grown-ups or whatever the case may be but many many of them did not and all we were told was that well you gotta forgive them and so there was no healing in that for the person that was hurting. Like there's no healing in somebody hurting you. And and, and and then there's no nothing, you know, there's no closure, there's no healing, there's no nothing. So you holding all that is trauma inside, but everybody telling you, well, you gotta forgive them. No, how about we start holding them accountable for their actions? How about that? You know, how about us stop path? How about us uh, not pacifying dysfunctional behavior? Pulling that man aside and saying, brother, you know, you really should not do this. You really should not do that. You're hurting your children. You're hurting your wife. You know why men and women can't do that? Because they're doing the same thing in their home. So they can't pull nobody's coattail. They can't tell anybody anything. They can't counsel anybody because they may be even worse. We got some cleaning up to do. We all got some cleaning up to do. And I just get so sick and tired of, no, you don't get a pass. You do not get a pass anymore. You have an accountability and a responsibility to grow. If you decide that you're gonna stay where you were 40, 50 years ago, then the people that you're connected to do not have to be connected to you anymore. And you, you have no business saying shame on them because they're tired of abuse or they're tired of toxic behavior. They have every right to exercise their right to have healthy boundaries. And so that's what this video is about. It's about, you know, you know what do you do? What do you do when you've grown up into toxic situations and those people are still the same? You know, I know that we need to forgive them so they don't have power over us, but are we engaging them or do we just decide this isn't working? It's been like this for 40, 50 years. This person has never changed. They've never seen any wrong in their behavior. They've never even apologized to the people or the person that they hurt. And then you're supposed to keep going back for more. That's insanity. If you keep doing everything the same way and getting the same results, that is insanity. So that's why, and now I'm talking to our elders. If you ever find yourself alone, you know, in your retirement age and none of your kids will pick up the phone, none of your kids will, will come by and check on you, then you need to check yourself. You're never too old to change. You're never too old to heal so that you can have a healthy, productive life and have people look up to you. And what I hate the most about dysfunctional families and dysfunction in general 
they're they're romanticized and i'm like did you know when, when people die or they pass on and they be like oh this person was so fantastic this person was so great did you not see the version i saw you, I, i'm like am i like out in this vortex somewhere like you know is the world insane or what happened like did you not see the person i saw beating his wife beating his children cheating on his wife doing everything he could do using drugs and everything he could possibly do to destroy his family did you not see that person oh you just saw this good person well his family saw a whole nother person see we're not addressing these issues we're just covering them up and then we walk around dysfunctional our whole lives and question why nobody don't want to deal with us they don't want to deal with you because you're still toxic and you're still hurting them. Check that behavior. Realize that your childhood was not a, you know, stop making it a fairy tale when it was a freaking horror story. Deal with that. Deal with the fact that your, your father beat your mother behind every time, every opportunity he got. And then he abused you children every opportunity he got. And then he did everything that was wrong under the sun. And I don't, I'm talking to a lot of people right now because a lot of you guys are in denial. And if you don't watch it, that same behavior that that parent have, you're going to have it and you're going to pass it on to your kids and you're going to pass it on and they're going to pass it on to their kids. So the dysfunction and the toxic behavior never changes. It, it, it just evolves. It always evolves into something bigger. So we got to deal with this now. You know, don't sit around talking about, woe is me, woe is me. You know, my family won't deal with me. My family won't call me. My children won't come around. My grandchildren won't come around. Ask yourself why. And then if you look within and you decide you're still not going to change and you're still not going to do anything to make yourself better, then be perfectly fine alone because that's how you're gonna end up. Once people start loving themselves and developing healthy boundaries, they stop dealing with toxic people, period. Only unhealthy people still deal with unhealthy toxic people because the trauma bond, there's a trauma bond there. They can relate to the traumas. So they still deal with each other. They still injure each other. They still hurt each other. Nobody's growing and evolving and, and helping. They're stuck. So this is a challenge, a challenge to our families all over that have grown up in toxic um, situations and, our, and it was our parents. Our parents were toxic for whatever reason. It could have been a hand-me-down, whatever the case may be. We all still have uh, a responsibility to grow and be better than our parents were. We all have that responsibility. So this is a challenge for us to take a retrospective, you know, look within ourselves and figure out where in our lives that we are our own poison. Like, what is it about us? And so we get, we got to get that figured out and we got to stop looking at people and, you know, all of these religious people. Uh, looking at other people that have decided to walk away from toxic behavior or toxic people or dysfunctional people and and they they want to stone the people that have finally decided to take charge of their lives and be happy no you're not pulling me back in that misery you can stay in it but i'm not if that person repents because a lot of them have unrepentant hearts. They haven't asked God to forgive them. They haven't forgiven themselves. They haven't forgiven others. And they stay with that unrepentant heart. And they feel like they don't have anything to apologize for. That person hasn't changed and it will, and he or she will not change. And so they're going to keep repeating all of that behavior to the people around them. Don't tell you religious people, don't tell other people that they they were put here on this earth to be abused and mistreated for the rest of their lives, all in the name of forgiveness. That's a lie from Satan. Study and show yourselves approved. That's what you need to do. A lot of people taught religious religion wrong. 
They use it as a form of control and, manip and manipulation and we're still being controlled and we're still being manipulated. But I say it's time out for that. It's time for us to grow and get healthy and forgive ourselves, forgive other people and change the poisonous things, the toxic behavior that we still, we still have in us. And we have to recognize that. We can't just say, well, I'm not perfect. Well, okay, I tell you what, you're not perfect, but that's the reason why you're sitting in your however big home that you have. You got a three, four bedroom home and won't not one person come visit you. That's why. And I'm talking to a lot of people. And, and, and what I hate, and I'm going back to what, how we romanticize people that really did not have any good traits within them. We romanticize that. I, I, I'm, I'm calling, I'm calling y'all out, especially the women. Come on, come on, come on. Because y'all need to hear me. You had that father. That father was a whoremonger. That father was an abuser. He was a liar. He was a thief. He was he did everything against the commandments. But you're the religious person now. Everything he did. And you're praising his existence. But guess what? This is where it's tripping you up at. Since you think that's normal behavior, you're going to accept a man in your life to do you the same way you saw done to your mother. That's just the way it works. Until you, until you realize that man, that being, he could be passed on now. That it was something detrimentally wrong with him. And, and you realize that wasn't normal behavior. You have to realize that because if you don't, you're going to be okay with your husband coming in and doing you that way. And so then you having kids in this dysfunction. And then you're wondering why. You know, why are they disrespecting me? Uh, uh, why are they clowning? Why are they fighting? Why are they angry? Because you have a man in your home that's destroying your home. But that came from somewhere. That's a hand-me-down. You watched it happen, so now you're letting it happen in your home. And then guess what? Your daughter's going to eventually let it happen in their homes. And then guess what? Your sons are, are going to grow up and be abusers and cheaters and no good something something. Because we do what we see, not what we're told. I want us ladies to get that because I see a lot of y'all playing dumb. And and I and sometimes I just be willing to call the sister out and say, look, we need to talk. Because I don't like what you're teaching. Or I don't like what you're exampling. And, and you got this fake ass smile on your face and you're living in misery. But your daughter seeing it, your son seeing it. And then they're going to grow up and do the same thing. I'm calling us all to the mat. I'm calling women, men, everybody to the mat. We have to take accountability for our own space in this life, in this world. And we have to realize it started way earlier than the man you're with now. It possibly started in your childhood. Recognize where we are. Where we, you know, recognize that. Stop romanticizing it. It wasn't what you romanticized. That's how we sleep at night. You know, that that's what you have to tell yourself to sleep at night. But it's wrong. It's all, it's denial and it's wrong. We need to come out of denial and we need to heal. And we can't do that romanticizing somebody that was horrific. I'm just, I'm, I'm a straight shooter. I mean, come on now, let's get this together. Let's realize why we're in the marriage the marriages that we're in now, these toxic ass marriages that we've been in for 20 or 30 years. I'm not applauding that. I'm not applauding that. With every chance that nigga get, oh, excuse my French. With every chance that brother get, he's cheating on you. He's using drugs. He's, he's an alcoholic. He's, a, you know, abusing you in front of your children. I'm not applauding no 20, 30 years of that. I'd rather see two or three years of a functional marriage before I see 30 years of a dysfunctional marriage. Let's get this together, people. You know, this started out with just our parents, but it, it goes deeper than that because our parents, then we turn into parents and then our children turn into parents and the, the toxic behavior just continues. And then it even evolves into something bigger we're not glorifying God that way, living in denial. 
and I'm not saying it's it's not good to forgive. I mean, I we have to forgive because when we forgive people, we release all the negative toxic energy and we say I forgive you, but I you can you can forgive a person and be done with them, especially if they haven't changed. You can't change people, you can't pray them. It's some people in my life right now without me telling my age, you guys probably already figured it out. But it's some people in my life right now, I've been on my knees, in my prayer closet, praying for, for the last, let me see, 30 years or more, and they're still the same. Now, what if, for whatever reason, I decided not to forgive them and I decided to hold on to all of that junk that they did to me, then my life would be equivalent to theirs. What a shame. So forgiveness is key. God wants us to forgive, but we also have to learn how to have healthy boundaries with people. We also have to know, understand that if a person knows how to love you correctly, they cannot repeatedly hurt you over and over again it's time for us to recognize some of the poisonous things in our life because we can heal from them god can heal us all but let's go back sometimes we have to go back and do work way in the past and work our way up to the future and that takes therapy that takes counseling but we can become healthy uh, thriving human beings but we have to get out of denial and we have to stop painting this fake smile on our face while our heart is in turmoil i can see beyond the veil i can see beyond the smile and i know many of you are hurting and it's time out for that because god loves you and he wants the best for you but he don't want your life to be in vain your whole life because you decided to live a lie or you decided to live the way religious people say you should live just put a smile on your face and bear it no the black woman or, or the black man was not put here to suffer their whole lives and i'm telling you now we don't have to suffer we do not have to suffer we can make a change for the better but we have to stop living in denial so i know that my topic came way went way off because it goes so much deeper it was originally about you know, did you grow up with toxic parents? And if so, you know, how are you dealing with that now that they may be um, ailing or getting older and they may have to come into your home and you may have to take care of them? How are you dealing with that? You know, please chime in on my uh, page and let me know. Let me know how you're dealing with it. And, and I like to hear different uh, perceptions and stuff because then that helps me grow and open my mind up. Uh, but I'm not gonna, it's been 23 minutes and I need to get out of here. I appreciate y'all. I love you guys. I want nothing but the best for everyone. So I pray that you take this message to heart. It may not be easy to hear, especially if you're the one living in denial, but I'm telling you, God can bring you out of that because he's brought me out of it and he's brought millions of other people out of it but you got to get it give it over to him uh take care talk to you guys soon. special Bye -bye. announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh in houston dallas and other areas uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood and so many other things uh, the information will be in the box thank you
conceptual respect. People talk about it. All of the elements.